Clinic. My name is Dr. Mike Lloyd, I'm the director of the clinic and today I'm going to do a short video on a positive way of being able to engage with alters within DID or OSDD systems. These are often the most complex dissociative disorders that we work with and a problem that many many people face is how to build relationships internally especially when alters, parts, others do not want to engage in communication. Obviously this Obviously this is one of those things that is probably best done within the context of a therapeutic relationship so that you can work with your therapist to help guide you through this process, develop and build confidence in working internally because it can be difficult and there can be pushback from alters or parts who do not want to engage. This then is realistically targeted at those parts that do want to engage so it's about opening up the opportunity for them to engage uh, using this fairly simple, straightforward, but definitely not always easy technique. The premise behind this technique is that many alters or parts have roles that are assigned to them through the development of the trauma that takes place in a person's life, whatever that may be. So parts often end up with jobs or roles that are assigned that are often fairly positive but can often be very negative and even the positive ones can be very difficult because they tend to be a little bit one-sided. What I mean by that is that a, a, an alter may have a job, for example, to protect the body or protect the, the system and that's it. So all they're doing is protecting or they may have a fight or a flight part so it's all about running away or it's all about attacking so any threat that takes place or is perceived to take place may then be uh, responded to with a fight or an aggressive or an attacking type part. Sometimes that can be externally, sometimes that can be internally for example with self-harm. So a good way of being able to work and develop the relationships with these parts is by doing this. Once you know what an alter is assigned to in terms of their role, it's about going and finding them inside and saying to them, if you didn't have to do this, if the threat was over, if the danger had passed and I was no longer in threat, and you didn't have to protect me, you didn't have to fight, you didn't have to maintain the, the lock around all the secrets of the trauma that may be pleasant, or you didn't have to hold those amnesic barriers, what would you really like to do? Now it sounds very simple, but actually it's quite an interesting, quite challenging proposition. It's giving the possibility to alters to be able to choose for themselves what would they like to do. Now in my clinical experience, once we've done this, you tend to get a bit of a gap, you tend to hear nothing back, and eventually little things start filtering through. For example, they might want to do musical stuff, they might want to do artistic stuff, they might want to do games, they might want to explore, they might want to go outside, they might want to build sandcastles on the beach. It's about offering them the chance. Now often the reason people don't do such a simple thing is they have no relationships with these alters and they want them gone. This is the opposite. The whole thing about this technique is about trying to bring the alters in to say, what is it that you'd really love to be doing that isn't what you're currently doing for me? And if it's something that is fairly straightforward and something achievable, the goal then for the person is to try and encourage them to do that with the part. So let's say if the with the part. So let's say if the altar says, you know, if I wasn't having to protect you and if I wasn't having to be hyper vigilant all the time, I'd really just love to go to the beach and sit on the sand and maybe splash around in the water. So your job then becomes saying to that part, okay, let's do that. One of the ways I can show you that I'm safe is by going to the beach, going for a walk, taking my shoes and socks off and going for a paddle in the water. That can be very difficult actually. For people with that trauma it can be very simple may not be so simple for you. But so this is the challenge. This is why working with the therapist to develop that confidence to build in all the safety protocols that might be useful, and I can talk about those in different videos, that's a way of looking at it. 
Think about the Action Systems video that I uploaded a while ago. It's trying to rebuild what that is, trying to develop a new sense, a new relationship with these altars so that you can work purposefully with them rather than them just kind of engaging in these kind of very action orientated systems which don't often have a great deal of modern day context because they were developed and built in the past. There we are. So it's a, it's a simple technique, it's a way of building communication, it's a way of developing the relationship with the altars, bringing them closer in, asking them what it is that they would like to be doing in life and then seeing what kind of response you get. Please be patient, you may get nothing back, this could take weeks, it could take months, but in my experience, working clinically in this field, this often produces wonderful results if it works. So, I really hope that this has been uh, something useful for you. Um, please discuss with your therapist. If you are a therapist, please think about this as an opportunity of sort of developing a different way of working with internal parts. So for both DID and OSDD, where there are parts, it's about finding them, it's about building that communication. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I wish you luck and I wish you success if this happens. Please leave uh, any comments about this in the video. Like and subscribe if you'd like future content. Uh, I'd look forward to hearing from you. And uh, in the meantime, please do take great care.